TB Photo X 1.5 FX and welcome back to another video. Well, as the title of this video might hint at, I have gotten another camera and I don't think this would be a review of the camera. This is basically an overview because I haven't had the time to test it out thoroughly myself. So I think this is just a little bit of a going out over the specs and so on and my particular copy. But anyway, no need fussing about, I'll just show it to you. Here you go, it's the Mamiya M645J, and the J stands for Junior. So, <clears throat> just off the bat, I've named this camera a Young Frankenstein, hence the Junior, and uh, it is a Frankenstein camera in my opinion, but more about that later. Anyway, a little bit of a backstory of this camera. It was introduced in 1979, uh, and uh, it was basically the smallest version of the camera's the medium format cameras that Mamiya had made at that point. Uh, first you had the RB67, which was basically the big studio camera. Then you had an M645, which more the Pro 645 camera. In between there you also had the S1000, which was basically an M645, but with a maximum shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second. And then you had this one, the M65J. Uh, but anyway, or I might be able to call this the Joker, because it's the J of the bunch, and uh, yeah, but anyway, <clears throat> Mr. J. So, yeah, that M, J, Mr. J, yeah, yeah, I think that might be a little bit more appropriate. So either Young Frankenstein or just Mr. J. But anyway, let's continue. Uh, this camera has a maximum uh, shutter speed uh, of... Uh, maximum shutter speed, I should say, of 1 500th of a second and a maximum flash sync speed of 1 60th of a second. Uh, the little bit of a uh, difference with this one, and I think some of the other 645s contemporary with this model, they didn't have detachable backs. So basically the film roll that you put in it, you were basically stuck with until you had finished it. But anyway, <clears throat> The, this camera, according to the Wikipedia page, and I don't know if it's completely true or not, if someone out there knows, uh, just put it in the, the uh, comment section below, please, so we are all well informed. But anyway, it said that this was only meant for export. It wasn't really sold domestically in Japan, if I have understood it correctly. And uh, yeah, one of the uh, accessories that would be nice to have on this one, but unfortunately I don't have it, is that it could be used with a with a prism finder, uh, and that prism finder had actually a light meter in it. So you could actually, that light meter could either be decoupled or coupled, if I have understood it correctly, because the shutter speed dial on the camera has a symbol on one of its settings. Uh, if, you are, if you are a Nikon user, uh, and you've seen the Nikon symbol for center-weighted metering, that's a reminiscent of the uh, symbol that is on the shutter speed dial on this camera. But anyway, <clears throat> so you could actually couple the, so that the meter would meter for the light and you had basically a formal aperture priority, if I've understood it correctly. But anyway, this camera on the other, camera on the other side, uh, you can actually detach the meter, so, uh, or rather the prism. This has basically two prism, uh, two finders in one, I should say. Firstly, you have your old, you know, uh, chimney style, you know, uh, self-folding, uh, you know, viewfinder with a little silver button here. You have the magnifying loop, which I think might be detachable, so you can put in different types of magnifying magnification grades because you have two small uh, dots here, so I'm, it might be able to, you might be able to turn this and replace it. But anyway, so you basically have the waist level finders, the chimney viewfinder, whatever you want to call it, and you have the magnification. But then you have a secondary viewfinder in this as well. And it's basically the oldest type of viewfinder that you have. And it's the sports viewfinder, where you basically have this little square here with a circle in the middle, and you have this bracket here in order to get the best, you know, the, you know, get a composition. But basically, if you're going to use the sports finder, I'm a little bit um, uh, hesitant to which type of lens would be the best because this is basically not meant to be used with a telefocus uh, view. You know, telefocus. This is more for you know, just capturing the action fastly and uh, more for newspaper style work. 
But anyway, it uh, attaches nicely like that, and you also in this camera have interchangeable grind glasses. Uh, grind glass, uh, it's interchangeable as well, but uh, this is the one that came with this camera, and it's a grid pattern. So you can, you know, you, rule of thirds. So, and that's a little bit of a hint to what I think this camera has been used for. But anyway, it just snaps on nicely. And um, the thing is, I got this camera dirt cheaply because I think that the seller didn't really know what they had and they sold it without any lenses and um, it had this weird mod and so on. So, but more about that, I, I got it for 290 Swedish, which is about $35 with shipping, so it was very cheap for being what it is. It, uh, <clears throat> it's basically so that, I'll show you, it has this weird mod done to the shutter speed dial. Someone has actually, behind the dial itself, they have mounted a metal bracket or some kind of metal plate with two tabs folded on it with 90 degrees towards each other. And then here in the middle, you might see a screw hole. It actually had some kind of stopper so you can only change between 1 60th of a second and then down to maybe, what was it, 1 50th or 1 8th of a second. So it was very strange like so. And also someone has put a paint mark on the 1 60th of a second, which is also the flash sync speed. So that coupled with the ground glass that was in it, that it's not the standard, but a grid pattern, that makes me wonder and think that this might have been used as a flashwork uh, studio camera of sorts. But that's just me speculating. Uh, but anyway, let's go over a little bit of the features of this camera. You have a lockable uh, shutter release uh, button here that is threaded for a cable release. On the side here you have the advancing wheel with a little lever so you can just turn it as such. You have the dial here for normal or multiple exposure. You have a nub for a neck strap and you have the frame counter for the film. <clears throat> On the back here I have in it now, I'm testing it out, so I'm testing it with a roll of Formapan uh, Classic and it's uh, 100 ISO 120 film, so you need to press this in and turn this to the side to open it. So it's a little bit like the attaché case from uh, from Russia with love. Uh, but anyway, that's just me speculating. But on the other side here, you have another nub for the neck strap. You have a PC sync cord this socket with here, and you have the shutter speed dial uh, with this weird contraption. Also on the side here, you have a little bit of a silver button which is the release for the lens, so like so. Yeah, you can see the mirror in there. And uh, also, this lens that I have on it is basically a lens that I've had for a while now, but uh, it doesn't really work as intended. I'll tell you that much, because this is the 150 millimeter, uh, you know, Mamiya 645 lens, but it has, uh, yeah, 3.8 f3.8 but the difference with this is that it's not a normal 150 millimeter it's the 150 nl and the nl or is it nl I... yeah nl the nl series of lenses from amia they only made three different versions a one a, a 80 millimeter the 150 which i have here and the third one which i don't know what it is uh, but anyway, the, the difference is that this lens, the NL series, had built-in leaf shutters in the lenses themselves. So it's basically like the Carl Zeiss lenses that uh, uh, Hasselblad is using. But the difference is that you actually put the sh camera shutter speed at one eighth of a second, and then you could just choose the shutter speed for the lens between one thirtieth to one five hundredth of a second. And that's good news because you could have a flash sync at any given shutter speed. But mine works intermittently. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't because I think the me mechanism here needs a going over. It needs to be serviced. But um, the price that it takes to service it, I can't really justify that, um, that cost. So I just use it as a standard. 150 millimeter so it's good for portraiture and so on and it has a very good you know minimum focus you know distance of one and a half meters 
or that is about five feet. Um, but anyway, it works really nicely as a normal 645 lens. It's just a pity that the, uh, the leaf shutter in it doesn't really work as intended. But that's basically it. And then another control you have that I almost missed is this little red button on the top here. And if you can look here, you can maybe see it. You have a little bit of a green LED here. It's actually the battery check light. And the battery that this camera takes is the uh, 4LR44. So one of those, I think it's a six volt battery. And uh, if this camera, since these cameras had completely me uh, uh, electro-mechanical shutters, uh, if the battery would die to you, on you, the shutter curtain would stay open and the mirror would just stay in the up position. And uh, in order then to manually release it, you pressed in this red button all the way down and that would release the system. So yeah, it's a little bit of a workaround if your battery dies. So in essence, you get some kind of uh, improvised bulb mode. But anyway, that's about it. So uh, Mr. J, that's a little bit of introducing introduction of this camera. So it's a really nice nifty little 645 camera that can be had very inexpensively today. I got it for a song basically, nothing at all, uh, but uh, almost nothing at all. Uh, but um, I would really recommend it as a camera for what I have uh, experienced with it so far. But keep in mind that I haven't really, I haven't shot the entire roll that I have in it and I will have to do that and check if it comes out okay to see if the mechanics of it is okay. But as far as I'm concerned, this was a real bargain from my part uh, at this instance. But anyway, that's all for me for now, I think. Uh, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe uh, if you want to. Support me on Patreon, uh, that would mean the world. And uh, yeah, just, uh, just uh, I will see you in the next video. So take care from now on. Bye.